Deep Oaken is one of the most difficult permadeath games out there on Roblox. A game that expects players to lose their character often. Investing tens to even hundreds of hours in mastering its three mechanics, blocking, parrying, and dodging, in order to minimize taking damage as much as possible. So, with that said, is it possible to beat Deep Oaken in all of its bosses, starting from a freshly created character, all without taking damage a single time? Well, if I wanted to find that out, it would probably be a better idea to start my journey by testing the waters first. This is the Trial of One, a dungeon containing many challenges against various monsters and hazards. Players who succeed in these trials are rewarded with stat points to invest, making progress through the early game a lot easier. With around 9 different trials in total, it can be a tough challenge the first time around for new players. Despite my experience with the game though, going into this without plan would definitely be a mistake. My biggest one. Because the whole challenge was already looking next to impossible with the first trial. Under normal circumstances, this first trial is one of the easiest in the entire dungeon. As long as you knew how to parry at least one full cycle of orbs, you basically could not lose. However, for some reason no matter what, during the final stage of speed, one orb would almost always slip through the cracks, and it didn't happen just once. It happened almost every single attempt. That was obviously enough to be a major problem. If this was the only problem though, this challenge would still be a complete pushover. Just get lucky and pass it once without taking damage. But unfortunately, there are two more problems that make this challenge a whole lot more difficult. The first problem being that the 8th trial is essentially an exact clone of the first trial, only this time with the hard part instead, which meant that we basically had to do the first trial twice in the same run. On top of that, a bug exists that sometimes delays the load times of trials by a few seconds, leading to scenarios where we have a lot less time to react, or sometimes just none at all. So then, we can't spam parry forever against these orbs since we will just get hit 99% of the time for some reason. We have a bug that forces us to be on our toes at the start of every trial, and we have to beat the first trial twice in the same run. How the hell are we going to be able to get past even the very first trial without taking damage, let alone all 9 of them? Well, the answer is I didn't know. But I wanted to be one of the first people to do something stupid like this just to say I did it, and so started the pointless grind. Create a new character, start the first trial, try to parry every orb, eventually get hit, and repeat the whole process for hours on end. After a few hours of trying, it finally crossed my mind that my understanding of the basics of the game, parrying, might be flawed itself. See, whenever you press the F key, you'll do a small little animation, indicating your parry window. Miss this parry window and you'll resort to blocking with parrying going on cooldown. But successfully parry any attack within that window and you will temporarily get what is known as auto parry frames. They are exactly what it sounds like. After parrying an attack, any other attack that hits you is automatically parried for you within a short time span of around 200 milliseconds which is probably implemented to make multi-hitting moves a much less greater nightmare to deal with. But then, shouldn't parrying constantly refresh these auto-parry frames? Well, turns out, no. While auto-parry frames are active, parrying is actually put on cooldown, indicated by this tiny little symbol whenever you parry an attack, which both makes sense and doesn't make sense at the exact same time. Unfortunately, that meant bad news for us, since in order to parry every single orb and not get hit, we had to parry an attack, wait for the auto parry frames to run out, and as soon as they ran out, immediately parry another attack to refresh them. Over 5 times per second, with no way of knowing when this timer ran out, besides an innate sense of timing. Around 90% of attempts were still failing at this first trial on average, which is certainly better than 100%. But I knew there was still more improvement to be made. I quickly noticed when playing that you can change your controls in the settings tab of the game, and you can set up two different inputs for an action at once. So naturally, I set two different keybinds for parrying, and then it almost immediately clicked how it could exploit this. 
Since two different inputs for the same action gives you up to twice the amount of output for that action, that meant I could mash both of these keybinds at the exact same time. And it wouldn't even matter if I messed up the timing of one input, but got the other one right. It would still parry the attack. With this improvement implemented, I was able to get through the first trial extremely consistently, even being able to beat the first trial two attempts in a row without getting hit both times. However, even with this being the hardest trial of the challenge, we still have eight more to talk about. The Sharko, or Megalodon, is one of the first mobs you likely encounter when playing the game. Mostly posing as a challenging mob for beginners, having to switch between quickly parrying and dodging some of his attacks, he is almost a cakewalk when it comes to this challenge. We just gotta watch out for his kick and preemptively parry again after the first slash, in case he ever slashes twice. Things not too bad to remember. We get 10 investment points from completing the previous trial, enabling us to invest them into our attunement to unlock both 1 star mantras as well as reach power 2. Every other power level, with few exceptions, you get to choose an ability named Mantras for your character, depending on your attunement. For this challenge, I decided that the Gale Breath attunement would be the best path, having a ton of abilities requiring a relatively cheap investment of 20 points, those being Gale Trap, Gale Punch, Twister Kicks, and Tornado, with Tornado being the best by far out of the four. And luckily on the winning attempt, I got Tornado in the first Mantra hand. The third trial has ended quite a few of my runs, mostly due to lack of patience with some of the golem's attacks. Trying to kill him fast by constantly parrying and swinging through his spin was a very dangerous option, so I decided it would be a lot safer to run away and wait for that attack to end before getting in any hits. He's also the only encounter with an undodgeable and unparryable attack. The best hope if it happens is to dash straight upwards in the air to avoid the AoE damage, although thankfully it happens, like, pretty rarely. Other than that, he's basically a Sharko with a giant laser beam if you really think about it. Next trial is nothing too special when it comes to this challenge, other than the fact that he looks like a pair of Crocs. Just don't get greedy hitting the Thresher too much on specific attack patterns, since there are a couple attacks where you can only hit him once or twice without retaliation. Finally after this trial, we reach Power 4, getting a second Mantra Hand and a second ability to utilize in our kit. Now, remember when I said we'd ideally want Tornado by Power 4? Well, I didn't, but it's still mainly because of this trial. The Angels are one of the hardest trials in the Trial of One. They're also very deadly when it comes to this challenge because if we don't kill them fast enough, they can use an extremely dangerous move to this challenge. Gaze. Gaze is an extremely fast support mantra that causes the user to scratch themselves, damaging themselves by a very tiny amount. Although you can block it, Holding block all the time in anticipation can quickly become a very slippery slope, especially with how much posture can build up. So, to eliminate this threat entirely, the best option we have is to kill them as soon as they spawn in. Using Gale Trap in combination with Tornado allows us to absolutely decimate the both of them. With three Song Chen invested as well as the perfect Flash talent, Tornado turns from an extremely good mantra for this challenge into a spawn killing machine. The next two trials, I kid you not, end in less than 10 seconds combined. After spawn killing the Enforcer in 3 seconds, we pick up the Giant Slayer talent for even more juicy damage for Tornado, then use it again as soon as the Stone Knight spawns and he's dead in 6 seconds. And then the rest should be easy from here, right? <laughs> well, now we run into a problem. Because now we're at the 8th trial, which is the first trial, but again. And while I could try and parry all the orbits without fail again, I already failed once at this point earlier in the challenge. The worst part is, it was because of a bug. It became pretty clear that the odds of success are not in my favor at all. However, I wouldn't have come this far without a good plan. Many cards and mantras that are otherwise useful become almost useless to pick, with the health stat being completely irrelevant. However, there is one that stands out far among the rest, and that is Prediction. Prediction is a mantra that reflects one attack back, being not very useful on its own. But, paired with the success of Prediction talent, and predicting an attack will briefly allow you to predict another, and another, and another, going infinitely as long as you're being hit fast enough. Only problem is that we have two abilities currently, and getting enough power levels for a third one at power 6 before this trial is completely impossible, at least under normal circumstances. 
This is where the Adret race becomes a saving grace for this challenge. Paired with the Auto Deduct Boon, I'm able to get an extra 6 points to invest after powering up. This easily allows us to both get power 6 and have 50 points invested into intelligence for prediction and the talent that makes it good. There's still one last problem holding us back from completing this challenge though. Even with all these preparations made, there is still a chance that we never roll the prediction mantra itself. You can't even guarantee what the Shrine of Solitude by asking for intelligence mantras, since Summon Cauldron, another intelligence mantra, can replace this spot instead. With three other card slots, the odds are still in our favor by over 70%, yet despite that, I had two other runs and simply because of bad luck. However, on the third attempt, it finally happened. I got successive prediction, and now it all came down to timing one prediction correctly against these orbs. Yes! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my fucking god! I did it! I did it! I did it! Holy shit! I am never doing that again! What an awful idea that was! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay! Jeez! <laughs> oh my- It's finally done. It's finally done. Oh my god. Hey, so, uh, it's been a while since I've last uploaded. How's it going? Anyways, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. And, um, there is quite a lot of stuff I want to talk about. Although, I do want to keep it brief, so hopefully this isn't too long. First and foremost, why haven't you uploaded in six months? Um, and the answer to that is kind of complicated. I think it could mostly be attributed to burnout and procrastination issues. They're pretty bad as well. I've been so anxious and stuck in my own headspace that it's pretty much led to me isolating myself from everyone else, and that's definitely not a good thing. My life hasn't really been in the best direction for the most time, and I think I want to take some steps to at least make that better. I will say now that I did finish a playthrough of Celeste, which is a game on Steam, and oh man, that, that game is so good, man. I highly recommend playing it if you haven't. It's probably one of the greatest gaming experiences I've had ever. And I definitely think I can say that game changed my outlook on life, at least a little bit. But uh, besides that, I've made quite a few promises in the past with videos such as the Maestro speedrun, Layer 2 guide, and the S-Rank speedrun. Um, I haven't got around to recording all of those, although I have recorded some other videos. Not all of them will come out, because I want to do another video compiling all the videos that I never got to upload. I'm not really sure if that would be interesting, so let me know if you guys are interested in that, but I do at least want to take a slightly different direction with this channel and how I handle things, which might mean uploading other videos besides the book and, I mean, the game isn't really in the best state anyways, it's kind of been getting worse for a while. I might make a video even addressing some of the stuff and my take on it, but I've already made promises to like five other videos, so I gotta do those first for sure. Oh, uh, one last thing, actually, before I go. I want to thank someone named Frost Labs for buying a channel membership a really long time ago. I am sorry that you could not utilize it further. I am so sorry. I... Uh, there's just been a lot going on. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I will see you again soon.